To be transgender refers to an individual who has inherent distress with their natal gender or biological characteristics. This affects their occupational life, their, their social life, and they just desire to be another gender. Uh, the general view is that of exclusion. However, when you have a conversation with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis, a lot of people will agree that uh, we need to do better to give access to uh, the tr people from the trans community. We recently had the president propose a ban to prevent transgender individuals from serving in the military. And this sort of sentiment creates uh, say isolation for the transgender individuals, even if they have supportive people around them. When we talk about the individual, we should first like try to understand, uh, do they have a supportive system around them? Some transgendered individuals are aware, were aware of that they were transgendered from a very young age, and they had supportive parents, which allowed them you know, to have financial and emotional support. However, a majority of those who do uh, tra want to trans transition or are transgendered, when they reveal this to the closest family or friends, they're usually rejected. And this can lead to homelessness. Um, the data, according to what I found, shows that there's a significant rise in violence uh, against those who are transgendered, um, and very, very little is done about it. Uh, it's very difficult uh, as a transgendered individual to find a job unless you're already established and decide to be trans. Um, your economic uh, risk is quite high if you're trying to do that as an adult. So in order for a patient to get gender reassignment surgery, they need to address a couple of checkpoints first. Uh, the first being finding a plastic surgeon who is adept at performing uh, this procedure or whatever procedure they require. And secondly, they need to find a psychiatrist uh, to provide them clearance in order for them to actually get the surgery. And uh, the research I did um, showed that some surgeons actually require multiple letters, so they might need to go see two psychiatrists and get clearance from both. So costs play a pretty significant role when it comes to patients being able to get gender reassignment surgery. And the biggest variable in terms of how much it's going to cost is what insurance the patients have. Uh, some insurances have what is called an exclusion criteria, which transgender patients fall under. And it means that their surgery won't be covered by said insurance. And this brings to mind the ethical dilemma of distributive justice for transgender patients. But in general, overall, uh, the cost is over $100,000 for both male to female and female to male transitions. Through psychiatric care, they are able to be diagnosed through the DSM-5. Um, with this diagnosis, they're able to be approved for insurance to allow them to receive other care through an endocrinologist, through hormonal treatment, and through surgical treatment, as well as receiving their psychiatric care if they need it. So currently there is still a stigma surrounding um, any mental health disorders. So when they're diagnosed with something like this, when the majority of the treatment is through an endocrinologist and, or a surgeon, um, and they don't really need a lot of psychiatric care because they're changing their outside appearance, not their mental status, it can have a very detrimental effect on their mental health. So when it comes down to the surgical perspective, there's a lot of um, importance in this because a transgender patient, when they get to the point where they, um, which is usually the final point, um, when they undergo the gen gender reassignment surgery or GRS, this is an irreversible surgery. One of the big things is this idea of gatekeeping that a psychiatrist has the key to the gate that allows the patient to proceed with this procedure. So that idea actually has had an impact on the transgender community because they feel that they have no patient autonomy at that point. And it's, it's an important thing to bring up 
but there is a reason for it um, in that it's a protection for the surgeons um, and the uh, ethical idea behind non-maleficence or do no harm because they want to ensure that the patient is completely um, understanding of the idea that this is irreversible. So yes, there are many procedures that are affected by gatekeeping. Um, two notable procedures is gastric bypass and um, fertility treatments, which this does bring up, again, another controversial point because um, transgenders, the transgender population always feels that it's the uh, community and the medical uh, profession that's going against them, but in reality, there are numerous procedures that are affected by gatekeeping. So one of the biggest risks that the transgender patient actually has going into this procedure is surgical site infections. And surgical site infections actually lead to um, the increased revision surgeries uh, post-op, which could then lead to uh, the increased chance of um, having a botched procedure. So that's one of the greatest and biggest risks that a transgender patient has undergoing this procedure. Uh, one of the benefits, though, um, which was interesting, is that there was a decreased number of prescriptions for antidepressants, anti-anxiolytics post-op with our transgender patient community. Um, when comparing the general cosmetic or aesthetic surgery patient population, they actually had an increased number of antidepressants, anti or and anti-anxiolytics as well. While currently there are no guidelines for the treatment of transgender people, there are a few organizations that have come forth with um, a general set of guidelines. The one that comes to mind is the Center of Excellence for Transgender Health. Um, they're out of the University of California, San Francisco. And what they've done is they've created a document that outlines uh, specific steps that healthcare providers, not just physicians, can take when um, addressing the healthcare concerns of their transgender patient population. What physicians need to keep in mind when treating transgender patients is that they're fundamentally human being and we need to keep in mind that they deserve competent, effective care just like any other patient would. When approaching transgender patients, we want to continue viewing these patients holistically. We want to be able to, from a bioethical standpoint, we want to be able to continue providing autonomy, non-maleficence, beneficence, and justice.